How's it going everyone? Today we're going to be covering when to group up in teamfight or when to split push instead. Now this topic is quite tough because there are so many variables that go into a league game that it can be really hard to know what the right decision is. So the goal of this video is to give you the information and the tools needed so that next time you're in that situation where you're unsure which one to choose, hopefully you're going to have a much better understanding. So if that's something that you struggle with in your games, then this video is going to be great for you and let's get started. Now, the most important point by far that you need to understand before deciding in a game between split pushing or grouping up in team fighting is your champion's default identity. It's really important that if you're ever unsure what to do in a game, or if you're autopiloting, that you fall back on what your champion is good at. And a good way to understand this is to think of every champion in top lane on a scale between team fighting and split pushing, where a champion like Malphite's going to max out on team fighting, and a champion like Trundle will max out on split pushing. And a lot of people understand how those champions function in a game. The part that's more confusing are the champions that can be good at both. So let's say a champion like Gwen, you'd put her closer on the side of split pushing than team fighting, but she can team fight, especially in certain games. But you want to default to split push on that champion because you do really well with resources. You want to get to three items as fast as you can. You want to be greedy for tier twos, where if you let your team die at a dragon fight on a champion like Gwen and you get a tier two, that's going to be really good for you in the game. You're going to pay that back in the future, where if you let the same thing happen on a champ like Renekton or Cassante, who, especially if you win lane, you can win side lane really hard. And you might be able to bully your opponent and play for that tier 2. It's not going to be as valuable. These champions, champs like Renekton, Aatrox, Olaf, they spike extremely hard on 1-2 to two items. So you want to be doing as much as you can during that point in the game. It's not going to get better for you after that. Where champions that play AD or roles that play AD carry champs or mid champs, they're going to start to feel a lot better around three to four items. So if you're playing a champion like Olaf, Aatrox, Renekton, these strong bruises, you still want to be using your side lane power. You don't want to have the Malphite syndrome where you just group up all the time, but you more so want to default to creating pressure inside and playing out the team fight. Whereas champions like Gwen, champions like Yone, you want to be really greedy inside, but you can team fight if it looks exceptionally free for you, but your default is going to be that side lane. So to help you all visualize it even more, I'm going to make a mini tier list because I know how much you guys love these tier lists to help you place your champion on the scale. So this should be your default of what you do in the game. So if you're a champion that spikes really hard on one to two items, like an Aatrox or a Renekton, you're going to be defaulting to team fighting most of the time. And if you're a champion that's really good at being greedy and playing in side lane, like a Garand or a Nasus, default to the side lane. But it's really important that you figure out, once you have this baseline set, once this is your default gameplay, then it's time to figure out the variables. Because even if you're playing Trundle, you can team fight if it's going to be a high chance fight. And even if you're playing a champion like Malphite, you can create pressure inside, maybe even break tier 2 in very certain situations. So it's really important that you figure out when and where that can happen. And this video should definitely help with that. Now, before we dive into the examples, I want to be going through some general rules that you can follow in the game that can help give you some clarity. And first of all, if you're in a situation where you can win side and you can win a team fight, so your team's doing okay and you're quite strong to the point where you can carry both, if you're making progress inside 1v1, then you almost always want to be defaulting to that. Now, the exception is a major objective. So Baron, Elder, Dragon Soul, you don't really want to be giving that for a tier 2. But if you give the second Air Dragon or the Rift Herald one of these horrible objectives that people like to throw the game over, but you can make progress inside, not only are you going to get a tier 2 and get extremely feared, but they might even send somebody to deal with you because if you can make progress 1v1, the only way they can stop you is by sending people to deal with you. And that, that's almost always going to happen because they don't want to give you bot and hip for Rift Herald, right? They're going to be sending people to stop you and that allows your team to get the objective for free or win the fight for free and you're also going to get that objective in the end anyway, so you should almost always default to that if you're playing a champion where that makes sense. If you're 7 on Malphite because you destroyed a Trindomere so hard, you probably don't want to be defaulting to side laning if you can just group up and force the fight and carry. But if you're playing a champion that's on that halfway mark or leaning more so towards side, uh, more so towards side laning, then you want to be defaulting to split pushing if you can make progress 1v1 in that side. Now, to put yourself in the best possible situation to make the right choice between split pushing or team fighting, you want to be having your pressure created before that option comes up. Before you have to decide between each one, you want to be pushing in your opponent under that tier 2 tower on the opposite side of the next spawning objective. So it's dragon spawning in a minute. You want to have your opponent stuck under that tier 2 before it's up. Because only then can you make the right choice. Because that's going to give you a higher chance to win the team fight. Because you're going to get there first and help your team get pressure or help your team get control 
control of that area, sorry. And also, if you can see, the enemy team are all grouped up around Dragon and fighting, and you can make pressure top, you're going to be in a much better spot to get that straight away, where, let's imagine, Dragon's up in 30, and you're just pushing in the last wave top, and then a fight happens, people die, and then someone TPs and answers you, you're not going to be able to do anything. You can't be at the fight, you can't get anything top, so you want to be having it around 60 seconds before. can be earlier or later, depending on the game, but that's a good rule to follow. Have your pressure created, and then you can see the whole map, you can see what's going on, and make the correct choice. And our next point is one where a lot of people struggle, the one I've got highlighted in green. If you're not making progress inside 1v1, regardless of your champion, that's when you need to be really thinking, can we win a team fight? If I arrive to the objective first, before my lane opponent, and help my team get vision control, can we win this team fight regardless of my champ? And if you feel like the answer is yes, you should default to team fighting in that scenario. Even if you're playing a champion like Gwen or Yone who wants to side lane, you can just group up with your team, get them full vision and carry that fight if you feel like it's realistic. Yes, if you have a 07 Sivir with Noon Quiver versus a 2 item AD carry and you're not making progress inside, you should probably default to staying inside, trying to ego your opponent a little bit, maybe getting tier 2, or just seeding camps and waiting for the future opportunity. But if it's very close in the game, even if you're playing a champion that doesn't excel inside, uh, excel at team fighting, you're going to be creating pressure top, making someone respond, and then rotating to the objective first, which makes the opponent have to respect you. You've created a 5v4, allows your team to get vision control so that can be a big factor in the fight and keep in mind you're not the only champion in the game even if you're playing a uh, trundle a champion that's not that good at team fighting they might be playing champions that also suck at team fighting they might have a greedy cane jungle or they might have some carry support like shako support something like that in that case maybe you can win a team fight so think more about the 5v5 as a whole and see if it's realistic because if you're not making progress inside then you want to be thinking more so about that team fight now if you're not making progress inside and you can't really win a team fight, or you think it's a lower chance, then you should just maintain your pressure, eat camps, punish your opponent when he leaves, and look for a better opportunity in the future, especially if you're playing a champion that does better later on in the game, like a Gwyn or a Yone or a Fiora. If you feel like the team fight is a low chance one, it's probably going to be better for you later on when you get two or three items. So just maintain that position and look for a team fight later. But again, regardless of your champion, if a team fight is realistic and you're not doing anything inside, except for keeping your opponent stuck there, then look for that team fight. I would say the one exception to that rule is if your opponent is significantly more useful than you in a team fight. So if you're playing a Laoi and they're playing Malphite, probably just keep them stuck under tail. Even if you could win a 5v5 grouped up with your team, it can be good just to keep Malphite stuck there suffering and let your team play their 4v4 out. But if the relative team fight strength is similar, because you did well on your lane, or just because their champion is similar class to you, then you can look to create that 5v4 team fight momentarily and be the difference maker because you're not making progress inside anyway. Now, as for when to team fight, this is where your champion's identity becomes even more important because it's a lot worse, it's a lot bigger of a mistake to miss out on a team fight, being too greedy inside on a champion like Kasante or Rumble, than it is to be t grouping up too much when you can win a team fight anyway on a champion like Trundle or Alawi. So if you can win a team fight and you're playing one of these champions we talked about before, these strong bruisers or these strong team fighters, you should almost always prioritize team fight. Just get rid of the side lane if you have to and be there early. Of course, if you are playing the champions that are good at both, like an Olaf or a Darius, and you can create that pressure, that is the ideal create pressure, make your opponent stuck under tower and get to the fight first. But if you don't have time for that, you should almost always prioritize the team fight because the game's not going to be getting better for you later on. Now, if you feel like there's a very low chance you can win a team fight, or it's not really in your favor and you haven't created pressure yet, then you can back ping it and prioritize side lane there and try to make your team not fight it and take the next one. But that's where the mistake is going to come earlier. It's really bad to miss out on an early fight on these champions like Aatrox where they spike really hard at one to two items. And then even though I'm not saying you scale horribly, the game gets worse for you as it goes on because everyone else is going to scale a lot better for you. All of these other roles, mid and AD carry notably, or certain jungle champs. So you want to be creating as many team fights as possible. And even if you have to miss miss out on some farm side or creating pressure side if it is realistic that you can win a team fight if you can be that difference maker then you need to prioritize it 
And you've probably heard me say quite often, be at the teamfight before it begins. So an easy rule to follow to help you pull that off is if you're versing a champion that wants to use side lane, you can look to rotate to the fight. So push inside, rotate to the fight, and hold your TP to get back to side later. Because you don't really want to win an air dragon fight, third ocean dragon, something like that, and give tier 2 tower to someone that you just beat in lane, they're going to get very strong off it. So it's important that you rotate create pressure first, rotate to that fight, and then TP back to side after instead of the other way around. Of course, if you do TP into a fight where your opponent's already there, it's not going to be much of an issue. But if you TP into a fight where your opponent's inside already, that can be that can put you on the timer. And if you die or the fight takes too long, the payoff is not really going to be there worth it. Now, if you're unsure if you can win a team fight or not, but it seems possible, then default to your champion's identity. So if your bot lane's not completely running at 0-10 and the game actually looks possible, but not really in your favor, it's kind of close, then that's where your champion's identity should be the default. If the chance we win the fight, let's say it's 40%, 30%, but you're playing Aatrox or Renekton, try to team fight in that game. It's not going to get better for you. You're not going to scale even more later on. There can be some exceptions. Maybe you're playing around your teammate's spikes, stuff like that. But generally, you want to be team fighting on those champions and not side laning. But if you're playing a champion that's, let's say not a full split pusher, a champion like Gwen, where you can side lane and be greedy, or a champion like Garen, and the team fight is not exactly in your favor, then you can call off the fight, be greedy, play for side, even if you don't get a tier two, play for jungle camps, because the next fight might be better for you when you spike even more, because your champion does better the later the game goes. But on these champions that spike very early, like Aatrox notably, Renekton, Cassante, you, or even any team fight champion like Kennen, you want to be greedy grouping up on those fights and trying to be their difference maker even if the odds aren't in your favor. But if you can get there first before the fight begins and help your team get control, that's going to increase the chance significantly. And our next point, a lot of people subconsciously understand it, but I do want to make it extremely clear, where if there is a major objective up for grabs, so a Baron, Dragon Soul, Elder, you want to be prioritizing that almost every time. There are exceptions. If you're completely worthless, you're feeding on a strong split pushing champion, then just create pressure. But if you're in a situation where you're not making progress inside, but you're relatively useful and the chance we win a team fight is not completely over, it's not completely zero, then you should probably just create pressure and rotate to the fight. This is where it gets harder because this is where it becomes 20, 25, 30 minutes into the game. So the variables start to creep in who's doing well on your team, maybe someone's tilted, not grouping, stuff like that. But for the most part, you want to be prioritizing that team fight as your top priority, more than a tier 2 tower, more than jungle camps. Don't delay your recall. Don't be greedy for a shitty third item like a force of nature or something. You need to be at that fight first and getting control and forcing that Baron fight, especially if you're playing a champion that prioritizes team fights over side lane. But even if you're playing a side laning champion, if you can create pressure, you're not doing anything against that tier three bottom and you can TP into that fight or rotate to it and create that 5v4, then that's gonna be way more impactful than anything you're doing in side lane. Now we're gonna be breaking down some examples with quite a few variables. In this game, I'm playing Dr. Mundo and Dragon is spawning at about 75 seconds, but I can make progress inside. If you can make progress inside 1v1, then you should almost always default to that, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I could group up and we can win a team fight, but because I can make 1v1 progress, that means I either need to send two people to stop me, or it means I'm gonna get a huge influx of gold from this tower and be even more powerful in a future team fight. So we can see here, I'm waiting for Rakan to go away, and then I'm going to be walking up on this next wave. So looking at the map, you can see Dragon. We've got that Hourglass going. It's going to be spawning, but I have zero interest. I'm not going to TP to that no matter what, because I want to be playing for this tower in a game where I can make progress 1v1. So skip it, wait for the wave to come in, and we can see this gen has no plan to, or no way to stop me. Even if it was cleared, even if it was a mid laner, he also wouldn't be able to stop me. So I'm able to get this tower 1v1 against anyone on their team which means it's way better for me to prioritize that over a team fight. Even though we could also win the team fight, this is where you're getting the best of both worlds, where you create so much pressure, it helps your team with that fight, but also because you can make progress 1v1, you're almost guaranteed that advantage. Now for this example, it's a very similar scenario where I've done quite well on my lane 1v1, I destroy my opponent inside 1v1, and there's a pretty good chance we win a team fight if I rotate to it. The difference between this game and the previous one is I can't make progress against the set 1v1. I can barely hit the tower and ignore him, he can just stun me, bash my head in, my champ doesn't have good sustain compared to a Fiora or a Mundo, so it's better for me to prioritize the fight in this game. So here I fog down, initially I wanted to fight, but I saw uh, Thresh was recalling, so I go for 
one more round. I actually regret it. I should have just gone straight to the dragon. But it's not the end of the world. I push in top. We make set respond. And then I TP into this fight here. And unfortunately, we don't get a cool dopamine team fight. I'm pretty sure they just flash away. But you can see in a game where I don't make progress inside 1v1, I prioritize the fight. We're able to win the fight and get the dragon. And that's the best use of my pressure in this game. Now, I could have played it better. I could have been here early and held onto my TP. I was a little bit greedy in that sense. But the, the general principle still applies where if you can't make progress inside 1v1 and it's realistic you win a team fight even if you're playing a strong side laning champion like Jax and even this game I'm building Bork you still want to play for that fight because it's the most pressuring thing you can do in this game now for our next couple of examples I'm actually going to break down some games that my students have played recently where they made the incorrect decision between team fighting or split pushing they made the right choice and don't worry they gave me permission we're not just cyberbullying them for no reason we are cyberbullying them for their knowledge and for the learning that we can take from it so we can see here in this game my student this guy's around Emerald 2 Emerald 1 he's playing Udia he's extremely spiked at this point. He's got a two item spike, you're not going to get any stronger on a champion like this, very similar to an Aatrox or a champ like Renekton, and this dragon is up in 24 seconds. Even back here, there's nobody pressuring him top, dragon's up in 50, he straight up just should have rotated to this dragon with a sweeper, gone full control of the area, and forced a fight to happen or been there for the fight if it happened, and then TP back to top if he needs to. But he's not falling back to his champion's identity where Udair, especially the tank Udair, prioritizes team fights way over side laning. And here, he's significantly more useful than the enemy top, 0-3 Cassante, but he goes top here, he pushes in the wave, trying to create some form of pressure, and now even here he goes out and starts beating up the Cassante. So we can see the enemy team, they all fall in, and now his team's play taking a 4v4 without him, and you can probably guess what happens, because he's the strongest champion on his entire team, they get completely wiped because he's not here at this fight. And Cassante now, 0-3, got annihilated in lane, lost his tower, he is equally as useless, as Udair is in this game because they're both doing nothing in this fight. Pretty sure he even dies here. Maybe he dies or he doesn't. It doesn't matter. Udair should have wiped this team fight completely and gotten his team the dragon and instead he prioritized side lane too much to the point where he's burning his flash, he's burning everything to kill this Cassante, and he's not at that fight. So being at that fight, even if it doesn't happen, even if they see, oh shit, two item Udair, let's not fight, that is much better than what happened here, because that is kind of throw prevention macro. It means your team is not fighting and not getting completely destroyed without you being there. But if you're there, there's a high chance the fight will happen. The other four roles, they can't play side lane like us. They kind of get bored and they just fight everything, even if it's a terrible objective. So there's a good chance the fight happens. And even if it doesn't, he prevents his team from having a fight without him. So he keeps the game extremely stable. And then he can always carry the next one, especially around Baron, where they're forced to fight him. And for another example, this tune right here is a silver Garen main, and he's extremely strong in this game. Now, Garen on that scale, he does default mainly to being greedy inside and playing to split push. But in this game here, he cannot make progress inside 1v1. So we know the rule by now. If you can't make progress inside 1v1 and a team fight is realistic, we should default to team fighting. Dragon's up in 40, his whole team is coming out. First time ever in solo queue where everyone's back time is synced. So he should definitely be at this fight. Now he greeds here, he initially starts to recall, and then he greeds to farm golems for Doran Shield, uh, for PD, but he could have sold his D shield for it, but even if he had 600 gold, and he was so close to PD, the item doesn't matter. Him being at that team fight early, especially in a game like this where it's realistic that we win a fight, is much more important than any item spiking you can get in a game like this where he's not even creating pressure inside at the moment, but even if he was, he wasn't strong enough to create pressure 1v1, uh, to progress the game 1v1, and hit tower in front of Urgot, so he should have been at this fight early, but because he's late, you can probably guess what happens. This is the top lane special. Sadly, watching your team get destroyed, and in your mind, a lot of people, everyone's been here, where they think, oh, why didn't they just wait for me? I'm so strong, I could have carried. But it's really important to look. There are going to be times where it's not your fault, but a lot of the time that I see it, I would say over 80% of the time I see this happen, you've ruined your tempo in some way. If you just base straight away, right here, and went straight to this dragon fight early, before his teammates could even take that fight, are they going to fight without him? No, 0% chance, right? So a lot of the time that your teammates are getting caught without you there, when you want to be at that team fight, it's because you've ruined your tempo in some way, greeting a wave, greeting an item, or just dying or, or something or getting chunked the play before, so it's really important that if your team gets caught without you in a fight where you wanted to be there, try to watch your VOD back 90 seconds before and see if you wasted time, like in this example, and really make sure you're at that fight before it begins.
Moving on to our final example, now this concept coming up is something that's extremely important if you play these Strong Bruiser Champions that spike early in the game, and something that I've been really prioritizing teaching my students recently, and I'm going to be teaching you, everyone watching, you're my students, but you want to be speeding up the pace of the game if you're playing these champions, right? If you're playing a champion like Aatrox, Olaf, Renekton, you want the game, you want the major team fights in the game to happen while you're on that nice two item spike, Eclipse, Black Cleaver, Black Cleaver, Sterex, whatever you've got, that's when you're juiced. When you're buying three or four items on these champions and you press tab and you see the enemy mid has crypt bloom death cap enemy eddie carries got mortal reminder ie doesn't feel so good anymore so in this game my bot lane got rolled the enemy bot lane is quite strong but strong bot lane champs strong mid lane champs are not stronger than top lane champs most of the time at that one to two item spike if you're also playing well so here we can see I base, I buy items, and I want to speed up the pace of the game. So I push button bottom here, I make somebody respond. You always try to create that pressure one minute before the objective like we talked about. Baron's up in one minute, and the best way to speed up the game is through Baron. So here, I push in bottom, I make the Hui react, and I run straight to Baron here. I'm pinging it, I'm saying on my way, I'm trying to create a situation where we get a Baron fight. I'm not just running here and starting it. I'm trying to create a situation where a Baron fight happens. So I come here, I get my team control. I thought about basing because Varus based at a horrible time and Senna's basing too, but I decide against it. Got nothing to buy anyway. And I'm here creating pressure. You grab your sweeper, you grab a pink if you can, and you just try to fully clear out the jungle and force this Baron fight to happen. So we can see that's exactly what's happening. We are speeding up the pace of the game one way or the other. Now, it's not always going to go well for you, especially early on, but if you prioritize the fight over the Baron itself, more often than not, it will. So we can see we force Baron, I, I flash over the wall, and we just bash their heads in. Here, I probably should play a little bit safer, but we're able to kill everyone here, and we get the Baron in the end, and this was the game-winning play. If I didn't do anything, if I just created pressure bottom, it took random skirmishes, and the game started to go for 25-26 minutes, when the MF gets a mortal reminder of three items, and we can see Huey is really close to being strong as well, the game's not going to be as good for me, but because I sped up the game here, and I fell back, my champion's identity, I want team fights to happen, I want a lot of early fights and skirmishes, around one to two items and i want to explode the game before the other champions in the game get stronger so i went straight to baron as it was spawning full control and made this a reality you don't have to just do it to baron you can do it to dragon you can do it to dragon soul but it's a good way to speed up the pace of the game and force that team fight to happen even if you're playing a champion like aatrox or, or olaf or renekton where your engage is quite terrible you can force them to fight you like in this game because if they don't then we're going to get the baron Alright everyone, that's it for now, and one more thing before I go, don't expect just by the end of this video to queue up and instantly know the best time to group and split push in every single situation. Like I said at the start, there are so many variables that goes into that decision, you're going to have to improve upon it over time. This video should give you the tools needed to know what to look for when you're reviewing your games or making the mistake in the moment, but it's going to be a process that you need to apply over time, and you're definitely going to get better at it as long as you're thinking about it with intention, so best of luck in your games, and I'll see you guys next time.